Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 12 of the Chosen One Star Wars podcast here on Game Domain. As always, I am your host, Jason, joined by my co-host, Captain. boy All right, so uh, once again, Leo's not going to be able to be with us. Hopefully, he'll uh, be with us for next week's recording for our review on the season finale of Clone Wars Season 7, which we are getting this Monday, the same day that this episode of The Chosen Ones is coming out. Um, so uh, this past Friday... We got episode 11 of the Clone Wars Season 7, the second to last episode of the Clone Wars we might ever get. Uh, looks like that it will probably, you know, they're calling it the final season. I doubt they're ever going to come back and cover stuff that previously happened again and whatnot. But um, so this looks like it's just going to be the end. Uh, this episode kind of picked off right from, I guess, around the middle of the events of Revenge of the Sith. Uh, and with Ahsoka uh, leaving Mandalore with uh, some of the 501st Legion, who Anakin split to assign um, with Ahsoka, you know, with their redesigned uh, uh, with their redesigned helmets, uh, mimicking her her facial uh, her facial features, and Captain Rex, of course, with her. Um, yes, yeah, so they they have Maul kind of on this ship. And that's really what the whole episode was about, was just kind of taking place on this ship with Maul, uh, trying to bring him back to Coruscant. It just starts with them going right into hyperspace. And uh, yeah, so Captain, why don't you just give some of your uh, first thoughts uh, about the episode? I knew from the second Maul, or so, for, for those of you who've watched the episode, who those, those of you who haven't, spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you doing here? Go watch the episode, then come back. But the we get a really cool glimpse at some ancient Mandalorian tech from back when uh, back from when the Jedi and the Mandalorians were in you know fighting together. It was pretty fucking awesome. They've got Maul in this giant floating sarcophagus. Yeah. And I I love how I love how bitching. Ahsoka was like I thought I your I thought your sister banned those, and then Bo-Katan was like she did. This is the last one. Yeah, it's just like oh, this one is in a museum somewhere. <laughs> but that, I liked how you know we got a bit. Uh, we actually got a. A good look at Mand. Uh, what was his name? Was his man Mandalore? I can't remember. Uh, the uh, the I um. Don't, I don't know which. No, I don't. Know I can't remember. It's where the, it's where the Mandalorians get their names from. He was like the greatest Mandalorian ever, so they named themselves after him. But yeah. you get a nice little uh, on the casket that Maul's in. You get a nice little uh, picture of his face around the center because you know it was. Oh, God, it was awesome. But as soon as they started bringing Maul in, the really sad foreboding music from when like uh, Anakin sat in the council chamber in yeah. episode three and he's like staring at Padme and he's like I'm gonna you know I'm gonna mind yeah, staring across the whole entire this. yeah where like that music started playing I was like oh shit it's about to get real and then it did and I was like oh, through the entire episode even all the way up to the end which was a it was kind of a weak cliffhanger was the ending but you know it was still pretty good all the way through and I especially like the fact that um they tied it in really well with episode three by, I won't say redubbing because I'm pretty sure they took some of the actual dialogue from episode three. Yeah, they did that uh, one the, scene the, with Windu yeah. and, and Yoda. That was that was the scene that I was talking about last week that was in the trailer that didn't that I didn't think we were actually going to end up getting. But yeah, that that's what we eventually got in this episode. Well, yeah, because in, in episode three, I'm pretty sure it ends right after. Um, like Brave it's have a right after Miss Windu's say, line yeah. or right after Yoda's line, yeah. and then it continues like the council meeting continues with the soccer. Yeah. That was pretty neat, and I do like the fact that I'm pretty sure they used the original. So, um, I can never remember the actor's name who plays who's always played the Emperor apart from when it was oh, the shitty yeah, hologram. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they kept his line. For you know, execute order sixty six from the actual movie. I don't know if they redubbed yeah, over I that with. I don't know if it was Sam Whitwer either. I actually, I, you know, what? I no, I think it was. I think it was because the person Whitwer who does who the Emperor playing. now, yeah, is like the, really, is like got a really good voice comparison with with it's like they're almost Ian identical. Yeah, with the, Ian McDermott, yeah. yeah, Sam, Sam Whitwer, who does the Emperor, who did the Emperor in Rebels, and who did the Emperor in the Clone Wars. He was, um, he also voices Maul, I believe. So they, it's the it's the same exact voice actor who does. Maul. Oh wow! Really? And yeah, and I believe he also did like regular Palpatine in the Clone Wars, like when he wasn't being like Chancellor Palpatine, not when he was being Darth yeah. Sidious. But he definitely voices Darth Sidious in Clone Wars and Rebels and yeah, you know, all the animated stuff. And he also does Maul's voice as well. And he did Maul's voice in Solo because in Solo they just had Ray Park standing there with the uh, yeah with as the, the body, yeah, yeah as the body, and they had uh, Sam Witwer's uh, uh, voice acting on. Yeah, Sam Witwer's also the guy who does Anakin, isn't it? No, Anakin is uh, Matt Lanther, I believe his name is. I'm sure, yeah, because he's the guy who plays uh, Starkiller, isn't he? 
Um, oh yeah, Sam Witwer also. Yeah, he does play Star Killer too. Yeah. yeah. See, I keep getting confused sometimes because yeah, like he does I, a lot of voices. I'm, I'm sure at one point he did Maul. Giggity. I'm pretty sure he did the voice from Maul at one point. Who Sam? I can't remember. Or Matt or the Anakin? Yeah. No, yeah, Sam. The, uh, Sam the, Witwer. No, the guy, who does, the guy who does Anakin. I'm pretty sure he did oh. Maul at one point. Oh yeah, I I, don't, I have no idea about that one. But yeah, definitely. I can't remember. But, but like, but when Order sixty six kicked off, it was really nice to see that. Like, yeah. even though Rex was like, "Yeah, I'm going to comply with this order," it was like. Damn, I'm not, I don't want to shoot with yeah, Sokka. Yeah, face. you could just see like that because I, I didn't. I didn't think I, I would have thought that somehow his inhibitor ship would be removed before the actual like execution of Order sixty six actually happened. So I was a little shocked to see that he actually took the order from Palpatine. But then I think it actually had a little bit more weight to his decision and kind of his like rebelling against that order. And obviously, you know, he says throughout all the Clone Wars, good soldiers follow orders. And it's just and it's it has a lot more weight on it. The fact that he's getting the order directly. And obviously, we know that he ends up ignoring it and then, you know, confronting and befriending Ahsoka at the end. And then when Ahsoka gets confronted with more of the clones and then he just and then he shoots them when they're standing right behind her. Um, I, I mean, I just thought, I, yeah, I thought that had a lot more weight to it with him actually taking the order himself rather than what I thought they were going to do with was literally just him somehow obviously being aware of the order happening. But faking it. Yeah, but faking it and, and, and somehow and being able to and not actually threatening Ahsoka. But I just thought because the dynamic that I or the feeling that I got from that was very, very similar to with Fives because Fives kind of mind was just going crazy where he knew that that he had where he knew um about well not not fives the other one that went uh rogue that killed I echo don't, yeah echo that but killed um the uh that killed the jedi on i don't even remember i can't remember that chain but jedi but that one episode and then when they went on the when fives went on the quest and they tried they tried to figure oh out, you mean when when uh he shoots the, yeah, when he the shoots jedi, the jedi twin sisters yeah the yeah when he shoots the twin sister i don't and then and then fives up and they and they first learn about the inhibitor ship i just thought it was kind of parallel to that with how um it was like how you could see like fives was so shocked at like what he was learning and the other um the other clone who ended up who killed the jedi and that i felt like was very very similar to rex and how he kind of took in that information with ahsoka and he was regretting he didn't want to shoot ahsoka but obviously event like i mean you know he was he's trying to follow his orders that's how he's programmed to but eventually he can fight that off um with his mind and whatever and gets the inhibitor ship removed but um yeah i mean i just uh, and then i i loved how uh, as somebody whose favorite character in star wars is r2d2 i loved how ahsoka kind of teamed up with the droids and they kinda, yeah. and then they zapped rex and then he and then they took rex out and she's like don't hurt him and they kind of and they went out on the ship also yeah also i mean ahsoka in this episode again just just complete and utter badass i mean just all the combat was just completely unreal when she's standing on that hologram table with the lightsabers just twisting oh, yeah. swirling back and spraying. forth just spraying all this and you can see she doesn't want to kill the clones she's just kind of defending herself obviously the bullets get deflected the right the rifle fire the lasers get deflected back yeah. into them and kill them but she doesn't slash any of them with her lightsabers no yeah she i was gonna say i'm pretty sure she doesn't the, kill any. yeah she it's like batman she throws them up under the like just makes them unconscious throws them up under the ceiling they go unconscious the by slamming in. Stuff. Yeah, they cuts the one guy's arm off. Which is we didn't talk about this in the last episode. Dude, Did you I saw I saw all over the internet just really quickly. There was apparently in the last episode, there was a um or I don't even know if it was I don't know if it was the last Oh, I think it was the last episode, like the Siege of Mandalore like montage. Um <laughs> there was a clone people were freaking out all over the place because you know you don't really see the clones die in clone wars or you don't really see like in, in rebels like on any of the stormtroopers you don't really see like any violent deaths but there was a clone who just got completely sm like sm uh smashed by um by one of the uh republic uh like one of the republic walkers and he just got completely stomped on so people were freaking out about that so then i'm sure this is gonna anger some people too because his arm literally got cut off and his dog arm <laughs> <laughs> fucking Maul yeah. in this one. It was oh like God, Ahsoka was frees Maul and she's just like, right, go cause a distraction. Yeah, and he's like, right, okay. Uh, so he cuts someone's head off yeah. on screen yeah. with a bit of wall. Yeah. I was like, where has this Maul been yeah. my entire life? And I, I love once I love once again, I love the dynamic between the two of them. And like and then I loved how he was like, um it, it, it reminded me of in the earlier Clone Wars arcs and the earlier seasons. Um, I don't, like when we had um when Ventress and when uh when Maul and oh why can't I remember his brother's name? 
What? So you mean Savage or yeah, Press, Savage who they keep calling yeah. Savage? Savage, yeah. Um, when him and him and him and Savage uh, captured or and had like Obi Wan and Asajj kind of in that same uh, on the same ship, and then Obi Wan and Asajj Ventress teamed up with each other. Just keep that, yeah, and that's yeah, and just keep like going back and forth. That's kind of the dynamic that I got between Ahsoka and. Um, and Maul on this one, and I love, I love when he was like, "Aren't you gonna give me a fighting chance?" And she's like, "I'm not <laughs> yeah. rooting for you." And doesn't give him a lightsaber, and he walks off, and then she goes her own way. But yeah, Maul, I, I saw, I saw also um, on Instagram, it was like a side by side shot. It was a parallel of when Vader walked out in Rogue One in front of all the rebels, and it was the same thing, just with Maul walking out in front of all the clones and just completely destroying them. I mean, he was just insane when he was just pulling those panels off the wall. And just holding them to defend himself, I mean, it was just, it, it was completely insane. I loved how that, that scene looked, and he just looked like a complete badass in that scene. And, um, I mean, I, the, the whole episode overall was just well done. I liked, once again, the, the tying into um, Revenge of the Sith that we got. I liked that little meeting. I, I wasn't, I mean, it, because I, I'm assuming, I guess Windu and Yoda somehow know, because originally it was just Anakin and Obi-Wan who knew that Ahsoka was going to Mandalore to try to capture Maul and whatnot, and Yoda and Mace Windu, we didn't know if they knew, but obviously from this episode it seemed like they know, because they're like, oh, great work you did for the Republic, but not as a Jedi. And then she's like, yes, Master, or whatever. And then and then Mace Windu is kind of like, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, not, just not like for a citizen. Backhanser. Yeah, like, not for a, not uh, information for a citizen. And I mean, obviously she had valuable information to them about Sidious and could have done some help, but Mace Windu is just being an asshole, so she's like, alright, fuck you, I don't really care. And and then um and then she's just like and then yeah and then he's just like you're a citizen but then i like how yoda kind of sits there and still talks to her kind of going off that boundary of you know because mace windu was always caught up in like the jedi council and the jedi order first over like you know individual morality but yoda it we think is kind of caught up in that just because of how close he is to the order and windu throughout the whole entire prequels but then here you kind of see he goes a little bit more down like the obi-wan path and then he's still talking he you know what wants to know what's on ahsoka's mind and doesn't just throw her away as being a citizen but as like a human being not like what windu said and just completely putting her down and saying you know you left the order it doesn't matter even though they were the ones who framed her and and you know thought that she did bad when it was really bare so free and whatnot so she has the right to be mad at the order but you know i mean i didn't you know the mace would do cold shoulder cold shoulder thing i wasn't a big fan of that but um i mean now we just don't know how like in this event of order 66 obviously we know that once that happens so mace windu's already dead by the end of this episode um obi-wan's already escaping yoda's already escaping um anakin's already Evil. The, yeah, evil, but we don't know when the Battle of Heroes is going to start and whatnot. I mean, we don't know how long this finale is going to be. Um, I mean, it is out today as of the day that this video is being released because um, it is May the 4th, so may the 4th be with you. And um, they are releasing it um, on this mo on Monday today, but we, um, as of the time we're recording this, we have not obviously seen it. We're recording this on Friday right after the show. Um, but we really don't know... Um, what like where exactly this is falling into place by the end of this episode we, we obviously we're going to know seeing how maul and ahsoka escape order 66 and get away um off this ship and end up escaping and we'll, we'll see where they go to kind of put themselves in different paths of course for them to all meet up again in rebels but um I mean, there's really no, I mean, we get, like, we just don't really know where everything else is falling into place. Obviously, Ahsoka is not going to be able to find out about Anakin. Um, I, I mean, I don't think she'll talk to Obi-Wan again. I thought maybe they'd talk, she, they'd talk in this episode, but I don't think they'll talk again because if they do, uh, it would be like Obi-Wan, you know, would have to be hiding the fact from her because he does already know about Anakin. So it would be him um hiding the fact of anakin turning to the dark side from her because obviously we know that she doesn't really know up until we get that like that emotional reveal in rebels that he is darth vader when you know they sense each other when they're flying in the ships um but yes yeah, so i mean we don't really know how they're gonna go with that but um i, I mean o overall this episode was really really good I, I was a little disappointed that kind of the only thing we got was just what was going on in this ship I think maybe a little like I mean I would have loved to see some more Order 66 montage because I mean if you think about it, really the only pure Order 66 stuff we've ever gotten is obviously this when the clones are attacking Ahsoka the montage that we got in episode three 
and then just the one little flashback scene in Jedi Fallen Order, which is canon, so technically it counts. But, I mean, I would love to see some more, like, I mean, this isn't film, but on screen, even if it's not live action animated version of kind of just the clones all turning on the Jedi and kind of that, that emotional pull of Order 66. I think that'd be a nice touch. But, I mean, I think, I guess... I mean, it might be too late now because most Jedi's who who didn't survive would already be dead. Um, maybe I mean there was uh, also, uh, I mean uh, in the trailers they had shots of of little uh, Kanan Jarrus and his master, um, Kanan from from Rebels. So I'm not yeah, that's gonna be interesting. Yeah, I'm not. I don't know where they're gonna fall into this. I mean, maybe somehow. Because in Rebels, it does seem kind of like Kanan knows of Ahsoka, so maybe somehow they have some encounter escaping and whatnot. But obviously, I mean, we know Kanan survives, but he was in the trailer and he hasn't been in... I, I think in the trailer, he was in like a hologram scene kind of around a table and he was just kind of there and people were pointing out that it was him and his master. But um, I, I don't know if we got that scene yet. I, I really can't remember. I don't think so. No, we didn't. Is, so I don't think so, and I don't think that scene would happen now because I think it was a bunch of Jedi. So I have no idea. But if I'm not mistaken, that scene from the trailer, I think, was the the voice line that was over that scene was the one that we got in this episode when when um uh when Yoda says great great t- care we must take or whatever he says that that line I believe that was on that scene, but they were not. I think the only people who were on this hologram that we got in the episode was Kiadi Mundi. Uh, Yoda and Mace Windu, and then uh, Kiadi Mundi and and Mace Windu both leave, and then it's just Yoda sitting there talking to Ahsoka. But um, I mean, yeah. So overall, I mean, the episode was was fantastic. Like I, I mean, uh, the Maul and Ahsoka dynamic was great again. Um, I, I yeah, the, the the Mandalorian. I mean, I don't know what you'd call that, but the thing that he was floating in. I mean, it was just so sick. And I honestly thought that he was gonna somehow escape from it i I mean i don't know how he would do it because when they were kind of carrying him in there and then he was just sitting in that in that um in that uh that jail cell whatever they i mean with the with the ray shield blocking him i mean you could just see in his like all you saw looking into that thing was just like the glow of his yellow eyes and you could just see the anger in his face and i thought that he was just going to go berserk and somehow escape that thing but um Yes, yeah, so I mean, uh, I mean, I was shocked last week as to that the mall was actually uh, captured. So I really had no clue where they were going to go with this episode. Um, obviously, we knew that they weren't going to end up getting back to Coruscant. Um, I-, I did think at the beginning of this episode that they were maybe going to get back to Coruscant and it would just be in ruins, and then Order Six, you know, Order Sixty Six would have already been executed. But um, I mean, who knows if Ahsoka maybe will still head back to. Coruscant because she probably doesn't really I mean it doesn't seem that her that Rex and her know like the full picture obviously Maul has an idea of that of because he knows the you know the grand plan or whatever he keeps calling it um that he keeps talking about that involves Anakin and that involves um that involves Anakin and Sidious, you know, Anakin being groomed to be the apprentice, you know, his next apprentice. So he obviously knows, he knows about the grand plan, you know, he wasn't aware of it. He has some sort of idea, and maybe we'll see Maul, Rex, and Ahsoka kind of together in this next episode, in the finale, and maybe they'll all piece it together, and they'll be able to kind of put, like, the, the grand, you know, the grand scheme of things that, yeah, all the Jedi are probably dead, all the clones current against them, and that they just kind of have to escape and, like, and keep themselves safe. Obviously, uh, I mean, Maul and Ahsoka are going to have to go on separate paths, and so is Rex, because we find Rex on, um, I mean, I don't remember the name of that planet, but we just kind of find him sitting there um, in Rebels with uh, with Gregor and Wolf. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't really know where they're, to be honest, I have no clue where they're going to go in this finale. I don't know if we're going to get more of other Jedi, more of uh, Anakin and Obi-Wan, if we're going to get some sort of Battle of Heroes thing. I'd like to think that we're going to get some sort of shot of Anakin in, you know, as Darth Vader in the suit by the end of this finale. But I mean, I really have no clue what they're going to do with it. I, I I think to me, it seems like, and Captain, maybe you can comment this. It seems to me like that they're really kind of just going with that. This is, they want this to be as separate from Revenge of the Sith as possible because people thought they were going to cross over scenes and re-record things in, in animated form. Um, 
but I don't really know if they're going to. I think I think Dave Filoni's trying his hardest to kind of keep it as a whole separate thing from Revenge of the Sith and just touch on the things that revolve around Ahsoka and Maul that, of course, we didn't get because Ahsoka and Maul had nothing to do with the events of Revenge of the Sith from what we got in the movie in 2005. So I think that's kind of their goal going into this, and that they're just, they're just kind of keep uh, this season and Revenge of the Sith as far away as they can, not really trying to overlap things too much. So, I mean, Captain, I, I don't know. Do you have uh, any thoughts on what you think they're going to do going into this uh, next episode in the final, the finale? I definitely think that we will get some sort of um, flash, uh, like force flash, like Ahsoka will feel Anakin when he gets cut down by Obi-Wan. I'm pretty sure that will happen. Mm -hmm. And she'll be like, but she mm, Anakin's dead now. That's well, really sad. Oh, yeah, she'll think, yeah, she'll think he's dead. Yeah. yeah, but then when... And if they do it, it'll be funny as hell, but when Anakin becomes Darth Vader and he screams no, <laughs> like, it, like if she feels that in the Force, that'd be hilarious. Like, there is a new dark power in the Force or something like that. She doesn't know it's Anakin. Yeah. That would be hilarious, but... What well, we've only got one episode left. Yeah, finale. I mean, we don't know. I don't know how long it is. Um, I don't think they released the runtime. While you're talking, I'm gonna actually look it up right now. Mm. So if they have released the runtime, I guess it's got to be close to forty. It's got to yeah, be close to forty be minutes. Four, to wrap it's got to be forty up. plus. If it's not forty plus, I you, think people are gonna. Be you can't do it in twenty. With yeah. with the way they left this episode, you can't do it in yeah, twenty because no you've got to have how they escape the ship. Yeah. Tying it into episode three, uh, like uh, Rex disappearing off to the planet. And, you know, we don't have to see him meeting up with um, Gregor and Wolf, but, you know, we, we have to see something of them because we know that they take their chips out. Uh, we've got What else have we got to see? God, there's so much we've got to see that they have to get into at least a, a minimum of 30 minutes. Uh, so I definitely think, we, well, definitely we're going to see the escape. We're going to have to see what happens with Maul, so we're going to see... I'm guessing Rex and Ahsoka will meet up with Maul. He's like, right, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to get off the ship. Let's go yeah. steal a thing. I'm Rex. Let's, you know, we've killed all the clones that know I'm evil. Uh, no longer, you know, Order 66 in, so mm -hmm. let's, like, pretend or something like that. Yeah. Uh, then they'll get off the ship. Hmm. They might do a twin sun ending. They might do a whole, you know, yeah, a little, cut to uh, Obi Wan giving the kids away. I, I, uh, I actually, I do, I do see that being, I see that being plausible. Maybe we'll get a little Yoda on yeah, Dagobah and then cut to Yoda. That's and then cut to. That's Obi probably the most like a, 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 the biggest thing they could try and force in would be the twin sun ending from Episode Three, mm -hmm. but to to definitely tie in to the main story like of the, clone uh, uh, of the clone wars and you know continuing to four five and six we have to see we we definitely have to see how ahsoka goes into hiding yeah we definitely have to see something to do with anakin and obi-wan yes yeah, so i that i just want something with anakin and obi-wan whether yeah and then something. something with the twins we've got to see something like that maybe ahsoka feels like padme dying yeah. right? like when she dies ahsoka feels that because you know she'd managed to sense the ending, like, because she, when she stood on the bridge, she's like, "Oh shit, something's going down," and Maul yeah. feels it at the same time. Because I mean, we don't but, know if she knows if 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 um Obi Wan's alive. I don't think because no. I, I mean, I don't think in Rebels, Ahsoka and Obi Wan never have any direct contact. The only contact with Obi Wan, I believe, comes with um i mean with maul does i don't even i can't even remember does ezra i think ezra maybe ezra talks to ezra yoda, yeah ezra talks to yoda through that like big force the mystical alternate universe but i don't remember if he directly talks with obi-wan yeah he does yeah uh, okay. when he because he follows follows maul to, oh, to tatooine, uh, to and, tatooine then, yes. and then obi-wan rescues him when he's in the desert yeah. and, and you're you like can, you know yeah, come with and, me yeah and you can like see um you can see like little luke i think running across like in the distance or something in one of those episodes yeah right right at the end yeah. um like obi-wan goes to check upon yeah on luke and you just see him running across but yeah. he's like and still the best part in that is the the three stance change between Obi Wan and Darth Maul yeah, that is great. Yeah, sure. Starting with the Qui Gon, going to the you know Clone Wars Obi Wan, and then going to the old man Obi Wan and just kicking the shit out, yeah. and that was brilliant. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I I like what you what you said about the about the twin son about the twin sons and kind of and setting up that ending with Obi Wan kind of staring off. I, I think that something that would be unique because with the Clone Wars, I th I guess the main 
three characters that everybody looks to the main two being ahsoka and anakin and then obviously rex but you know he doesn't have force capabilities Mm -hmm. but i mean ahsoka anakin and obi-wan maybe if because we know at the end of episode three um vader goes off and stands next to palpatine looking over the death star being created looking out um looking out of the 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 ship now maybe uh, how i think they could wrap it up is if if obi-wan's kind of looking off into the twin suns Anakin is looking, or Darth Vader now, is looking off uh, towards the Death Star being built, and then we have Ahsoka, wherever she is, kind of looking off, and all three of them have some sort of little Force connection, and just kind of kind of feel each other's presence, and then it kind of just ends and wraps up like that, just kind of like how we got in, um, in Episode 3. But um, yeah, I mean, like you said, we're going to have to get some sort of escape. Um, so, something that I, that I actually, I forgot about that I saw being thrown around the internet was that there's speculation that there's going to be some sort of encounter between Sidious and Maul and Ahsoka, which, I mean, I would have no idea how that would work into things because, I mean, I, I would presume that right about now, by the end of this episode or by the start, or maybe even going into a quarter of the way through or halfway through this finale will be during, um, Palpatine and Yoda's fight and simultaneously with Anakin and Obi-Wan's um so I don't know how that would fall into things but uh because people were saying that there was like leaked images of being in that uh, of of like Maul of a uh, of Rex Maul and Ahsoka like being in the same room with like two red blades like cutting down a door in front of them I mean I have I have no idea if those are real or if those are completely fake or if people just took two different shots and kind of pushed them together but I mean I I just saw that because that was a rumor I mean that'd be interesting if that happened but I, I just don't really think it would make I don't think I don't know how that would make any sense or fall into the timeline of this whole thing with along with Revenge of the Sith but um yeah I mean there really is no kind of predicting what they're going to do with this finale I mean, you know, at this point, it's almost like, I mean, whatever we get's probably going to be pretty good. I mean, I, I just, it, these, this Siege of Mandalore arc makes me more annoyed at the fact that they wasted four whole episodes with the Martez sisters arc. Because like, God, uh, I I, yeah, like we said previously, well, I mean, I know I, I said this a couple of times, I think each of the last two weeks, the, the Bad Batch arc was something we didn't need, but it was, it was good. It was, it was nice to wrap up um you know wrap up echo's story kind of have him come back and then go apart and be be a part of something greater be part of the bad batch um i mean you know that was that was all great i mean maybe i don't think they'll come back in this finale but we have no idea maybe their inhibitor chips are somehow sabotaged due to their abnormalities and maybe some of them can kind of escape off like we saw rex and gregor and wolf did um so, I mean, I, we have, I have really no idea because Gregor and Wolf, when we saw them in Rebels, were kind of just completely gone crazy. And they, how they acted kind of reminded me of how the Bad Batch acts, the Bad uh, Batch acts, like, in, you know, in this first arc of the season. But, I mean, well, I, I, you know, I don't really think that'll happen. But, I mean, the Bad Batch arc wasn't – it didn't contribute to the whole story as a whole, but it was a nice wrap-up and it was something that was good to, to get us back into the swing of things for the Clone Wars. But then this Martez sister arc, I mean, there's so many other ways they could have brought Ahsoka back. And we could have gotten even more of the Siege of Mandalore, and then they could have taken this to a little bit after the events of Revenge of the Sith. But now I don't think we're going to get that because I think we're going to go maybe just right after it, and that's it. Um, based on the you know the one episode that we have remaining and where we are on the timeline. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really... I mean, right now, uh, I mean, a- as you guys are watching this, this episode's already out, and so we will have already seen it anyway, so we will already know what's happening. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's really nothing else we can uh, predict about this. Um, so, uh, I mean, the only uh, the only other news we have to touch on is that uh, today, the way, when you guys are all seeing this on May the 4th, also uh, they are revealing, uh, they're releasing every single uh episode of well all the episodes of of the star wars saga were already on disney plus today uh rise of skywalker is coming out so i haven't been able to get the blu-ray disc because obviously we can't go out due to uh you know uh, circumstances that cannot be discussed on youtube without demon- uh, demonetization but um the uh you know they, they didn't re- the blu-ray has been out but you know i haven't been able to get my hands on it and then i don't know i'm captain i'm sure you haven't either but they're going to be releasing it on disney plus so i mean i'm excited to watch the rise of skywalker a couple times more i did i did like that um movie a decent amount and um yeah so now starting uh today you guys will be able to binge watch every single uh star wars movie in honor of uh may the 4th and so yeah uh 
I mean, that's really it. I mean, Captain, do you have anything else other to touch on before we wrap up here? No, really. I mean, we've pretty much covered everything. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, the next episode uh, the, of the Chosen Ones podcast, we will be reviewing the finale and the season of a whole as, of the Clone Wars Season 7. So, uh, yeah, so that'll be a big one. And um, we'll see you next week. May the 4th be with you. May the 4th be with you.